Hey, hey, everybody, this is Larry. This is me going with Q3 of the bi-weekly contest 133, minimum operations to make binary array elements equal to 1, 2. Uh, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, join me on Discord, let me know what you think about this problem and the explanation, everything in between. Uh, but yeah, uh, so if you watch my Q2 video, which I hope everyone does, um, I explain why um, everything is forced, right? Um, and if you got that one, then, you know, th this one has a similar idea, right? Um, and by everything is forced, I mean that there are no decisions, meaning that when you go from left to right, um, you're forced to make, you, you're forced to go, you know, you, you probably make the observation that um, if you already did Q2, that you're forced to choose this uh, uh, no matter what, because there's nothing to the left of it to flip it to one, right? And then you kind of do an induction thing, because you assume everything to the left of it is one, so you kind of change any effect. Um, of course, this is actually a different problem. Um, I think that that's an uh, observation that is, you know, useful um, and is needed. But then now it becomes uh, a second part of the problem. The second part of the problem is that n is equal to 10 to the fifth. And if you try to manually flip every bit, you know, uh, it's going to end up to be n squared time. And you can you know, do the math very quickly, right? The first one takes n minus 1 operations, or let's just say n because I'm too lazy, and then plus n minus 1, plus n minus 2, plus n minus 3, and of course, this is the classic summation uh, that sums up to n squared. Just very, um, you know, it, that's just it, right? Um, the key thing to know about this particular problem, and for me, honestly, is that I've seen it before, but it is come up like, I mean, it is something that you can come up with. It's not, you know, but for me to be able to solve it in a minute is because I've seen it before. And the idea here is just to keep track of um, whether the suffix is flipped or not, right? Because there are only two states for this one. Let's go back to the... Uh, okay, let's go back to this one for a second, right? There are only two states for the suffix, right? So the suffix is going to be... Either, um, either the suffix is, you know, if, you, if we flip this one, then we flip the suffix, right? So then now we can mark it as flipped. Um, and in a weird way, you can think about this as having um, like the reverse of prefix sum, right? Um, and kind of going over it backwards. Because here you can think about it as, okay, let's say we have a one, one, then now we want to flip this one, this one, this one, this one, this one, right? And then now, when you move the pointer from, uh, you know, from the index 0 to index 1, now we know that this is flipped. Um, so now this 1 is actually a 0, right? So we could calculate it a little bit later. Now we go, okay, we have to flip this again. So then now we flip it again, right? So we flip, 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 flip. But in a... Um, uh, yeah. Uh, in this way, you can kind of see that it is almost like a reverse prefix sum with this flipping um, because you can see that um, as we peel off the top of the element, if you will, the beginning of the elements, you see that um, we just flip every time. And of course, this accumulation um, is, is actually um, an XOR operation. You can think of it as an XOR operation. You can also just think of it as a not operation. But either way, it just flips all these, and when you flip it twice, you get the beginning again. So that's how you, that's the idea behind this problem, is that you forced everything of the way, uh, but you, you can keep track of the suffix flip state, because everything is going to be the same, right? Um, everything on the suffix is the same. The only thing that's different is the first element, because we are processing it right now. So once you do that, then you can come, come up with a cute solution, which I will do. Uh, yeah. And this is all I have, right? So if n, well, I don't know why I'm describing n, but okay. So yes, we still have count zero, zero, flip is zero, meaning that it is none of the numbers are flipped. For x is nums, if x, uh, x or flipped is equal to zero. And this is, um, you know, a bitwise operation, but I kind of, you know, you can also think about it as uh, if x is not equal to flipped um, or something like this. Hmm. Maybe it's, if it's equal to flipped. If it's equal to, f oh yeah, yeah. Sorry, this is if x is equal to flipped, uh, you do the same thing. But basically, the idea here is just, you know, and you could kind of play around with the um, uh, the truth table, the boolean truth table. 
it, and it's something that if you are still struggling with um, uh, Bitwise operations, it's something to just force yourself to do so that you can have better underst like understanding and visualization about it, right? And for example, x uh, f of fifth, and then x fifth, we can draw the table. We have zero, 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 one, one, zero, one, one. And then here, you know, this is zero, this is one, this is one, this is zero, right? Um, and the idea here is that um, if, one, you know, if this is flipped, you go from zero and this is one, then that means that the actual number is going to be one currently. So that's basic. And, you know, you just go through all four cases. And if it is zero, meaning that, um, yeah, it is either it is always zero and you don't have to flip it, so the result number is zero, or it's a one and you have to flip it, so the result is a zero, so then that means that you have to flip it again, so we do count plus or equal to one, uh, flip, I, I XOR to one the same way to kind of get the other number. Um, you could also have written it another way, like flip is equal to one minus flip, uh, maybe if you keep it, you know, if you're still using boolean, you can do something like this, um, but, but that's the way that I wrote it during the contest. It, for me, it's just more natural. For it doesn't mean that this is the best way to do it. So definitely, uh, if you, you know, uh, yeah, just work out what what you have. And and the, the key thing isn't to to necessarily learn this specific approach, like the bitwise thing, right? Like you don't need to know bitwise. I think the the key about why learning bitwise is just so that you have more tools in your tool shed, right? So that when you need to use it, you are able to use it. But for this problem, it doesn't really matter per se, right? Uh, but yeah, uh, but as you can see, this is pretty, uh, the complexity should be straightforward to analyze. Uh, this is linear time, you know, pretty uh, constantly afterwards. This is constant sp space, and yeah, that's all I have with this one, linear time, constant space, and yeah, stay good. Uh, and yeah, you could watch me solve it live during the contest. Next. Three, negative one, all right. All elements from I to the end of the way. Is it still greedy? Oh, it's to one. I always misread this as to one. Uh, okay. So let's see if we have. I guess this is still greedy, right? Or still forced. Yeah, people already got it because of that reason, but... negative one right so all right thanks for watching everybody hit the like button hit the subscribe button join me on discord let me know what you think about this problem this explanation everything in between uh stay good stay healthy to your mental health i'll see y'all later and take care bye bye